Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial number 10 about FreeCAD CFD OF. In this tutorial, I will show you how to simulate an organ pipe. The results of this simulation are time dependent. This means that a transient simulation must be used. We will use a 2D simulation in order to save simulation time. So the pictures above on the left, they show one of the results. So you can see the airflow um, going up, down, up, and up and down on the labium. We will take a closer look to that later. On the right side, you see some organ pipes made of wood. In this simulation, I will show you the difference between incompressible and compressible simulations. The solvers we will use are pimple foam for incompressible and row pimple foam for compressible. And I will show you how to change the solver manually. Here you see the drawing of an organ pipe. I've made this also with uh, FreeCAD with a, with a tech draw uh, workbench. On the left side, you see the air coming in. The air is coming into the foot. And there you have um, a very small channel, um, which has a dimension of uh, 0.35 millimeters. And this um, airflow will run against the labium. On the right side, you see the pipe body. The length of this pipe body is 325 millimeters and the width is 32 millimeters. Um, the simulation we will build up is a bit um, easier. So we will not simulate the foot, but we will also only simulate the air coming in from the left side, from the channel. Um, the thickness of this we will simulate this with uh, one millimeter in order to have a good mesh. Um, we have also some area surrounding uh, um, the, the labium. Um, the width is 253 millimeters and the height is 150 millimeters. We will use a closed pipe or in Germany you say geduct. Um, the reason why we use this is that we get a lower frequency. We will calculate the frequency of the pipe. For this, we need the speed of sound. The speed of sound is 343 meter per second. And the frequency of a closed organ pipe is given via the length and the speed of sound. And um, it's depending on the order. So for the first order, we expect to have a frequency of 263.8 Hertz. So now it's time to start FreeCAD. We will insert a new file and we will go to the part design workbench. Um, we go to the sketcher and we will um, build the the model in the XY plane, click on OK, and we go to the polyline. We click on, on the centra, go a little bit up, go a little bit to the right and a little bit up, go to the right in a straight line, go up, then we go to the Left, uh, this will be a long distance. We go down. We go back. Mm, this looks good. We go a little bit down. Go to the left. So this will be the inlet later on. So go a little bit down. down, go 
So we go to the right, this will be the pipe body. We go up and finish the line. So we will start with the dimensioning. This dimension will be one millimeter. And um, this line will coincide with this line. The distance from here to, to the so the body will be seven millimeters. Um, this length will be six millimeters. Um, this distance is also one millimeter. So the thickness of the wood will be seven millimeters. The length of the labium will be 10 millimeters. These both Line will be, so these both lines will be equal. Okay, that looks good. Um, the width of the pipe will be 32 millimeters. So the length of the pipe will be 325 millimeters. Oh. Um, we have to eliminate it. Um, So we have to draw again this line. Um, there was an internal mistake, can happen. We draw a second line. This line is parallel. And the length of these bows is equal. Okay, we have to define a distance from from this point to the um, which defines more or less uh, the labium or the lip. This distance is uh, forty three millimeters. Looks good. So. Now we are on a good way. Um, we have to define the, the outer side. This will be 150 millimeters. Okay. Now we have to magnify this a bit. The distance from here to this point will be 100 millimeters. And for the last step, this length, we must define it with a length of 253 millimeters. Okay, now the whole sketch is green, which is a good sign. 
this shows that we made everything right. We will close this and we will pad this up to 30 millimeters. Okay, now we are finished. Um, we need two, two more refinements for the mesh. For the refinement, we go to the part workbench. We will insert the first cube, go to the dimension of the, of the cube. The length will be 65 millimeters. The width will be 30 millimeters. And the height will be 40 millimeters. And we must also go to the position in x coordinate minus 8 millimeters, in y coordinate minus 13 millimeters, and in z direction minus 5 millimeter. Note that um, this will be minus 18. That's uh, so. Yes, now let, it looks good. So we can close. Our mesh refinement is defined. We will rename the, um, the cube or the Würfel to refinement one. And we need a second refinement. This will also be a cube. We make a double click on it and edit the dimension. So the length will be 20 millimeters. The width will be three millimeters. The height is also 40 millimeters. In X direction, we will also have minus 18 millimeters. In Y direction, minus one millimeter. And in Z direction, minus five millimeters. Okay. Now we are complete. We go on OK and we rename this label to Refinement 2. OK. We can save. So now our model is complete, we can go to the CFD OF workbench. We insert a new container. And so first we go to the physics model. The simulation is a transient simulation. Flow is single phase. We will start with incompressible. Um, the medium is viscose, so the turbulence is regarded via a lamina model. OK, we click on OK. The fluid properties, air is OK. That's OK, we click on OK. Initialize fields, we will have both uh, a potential flow. That's OK. So in the next step, we have to define some boundary conditions. Um, we will click these uh, two cubes away because they now they are in the way. Uh, we click on refinement and press the spacebar. So we can magnify this a bit. And we can click on this area. This will be the inlet. So this is um, inlet. And the velocity is 8 meter per second. We click on OK. So next side will be the, um, the surrounding. We click on this, and um, this will be our outlet. We click on the next. This will be also 
outlet, we say add. And we say add. Okay. Now our outlet is complete. Um, we want to build up a, um, a two-dimensional model means we have to define some constraints. We click on this, on this side, um, define the boundary condition. This is constraint. This is a 2D bounding plane. We click on OK. And now we remain the constraint from constraint to front side. Okay. We have now to, to turn this over, click on this side, define a boundary condition, constraint to the bounding plane, looks good. We click on OK. And we rename this from constraint to backside. In the next step, we will define the walls. So there are many walls to be clicked. And uh, yes, so there is much, there's an easier way. So I made a list of the um, faces that I must eliminate. So I can say now select from list. The object will be the, the pet. And now I can say select all. And the faces I want to eliminate is phase one. This is the inlet. Um, I eliminate also phase 10, 11, 12. So these are the, the outlets. And we eliminate phase 16 and 17. These are the front side and the back side. So we click on OK. And now we have the faces that we want to have. And we click on OK. So, yes, so I have to make the body again visible. So, this is one of the disadvantages. So I go to CFD analysis again. No, sorry. I will go to pet because now we have to define the mesh. I go to the mesh. Um, the measure we will use is a CF mesh. That's OK. Um, element dimension is 2D. And the base element size is 2 millimeters. Um, we need some refinements. So for this case, I'm not making the um, letting the measure run because I must define the refinements. I go to click. I go to close. I go to the mesh definition again. And now I can define the refinement. So first, we define this via an internal volume. And uh, refinement we will define is select from list. So this will be refinement one, the solid. Done. OK. So now we have our first refinement. And we need a second refinement. We go again on the mesh refinement. This will be also via an internal volume. The relative element size will be 0 0.25. I click on select from list. The object is refinement number two, the solid. Done. OK. I click on OK. Yes, I make the refinement again invisible. That's uh, and I make the, the pad again visible. I make this refinement also invisible. I go again on the pad mesh, write the case. And now it's time to start the measure. 
the measure will run about one minute. So now meshing has finished. We can review the surface mesh. Uh, we click on load surface mesh. So the mesh looks quite good. Um, we click again the mesh refinements away. So we make it a bit larger. And we want to, to have a mesh refinement in the area of the inlet. That was OK. The, we have a mesh refinement on the inlet. So mesh looks good. In the next step, we can go to the solver. We click on the solver properties. We have to change some things. So first, the uh, simulation time, we will change this from one second to 0 0.2 second. Um, the transient right interval, because we have an oscillation, um, we will change this to 0 0.2. 001 second. So means we have much more things to write, and uh, but uh, for an oscillation it is necessary. Otherwise, you would not be able to see the oscillation correctly. Okay, now our properties are complete. We go to the CFD solver, make a double click on it. We write the case, um, save this file. and let it run. So now the simulation has finished. The simulation took uh, 45 minutes. Um, so we can start the Paraview in order to review the results. We can first review the, the pressure. We will make the area of the labium a bit larger. So now we can let it run and see what happens. So you see that um, we have a, some interesting results. So you see that we have a, an oscillating pressure. Um, we have pressure going up, going down, and this looks quite good. Um, the simulation. Uh, we let it run 0 0.2 second, um, that's okay. And this looks quite good. We can take a look on the speed. We go to U and we make it a bit larger because this is quite interesting. So you see the flow coming in, you see the generating turbulence, uh, the speed is going up and down. So Yes, we have a, some kind of excitation of an oscillation, and this is, uh, looks very good. That's, uh, that's how, it, how it's expected. That's quite good. So in the next step, we will take a look on the press, pressure oscillation. For that, we must define a probe. So we click uh, probe location. Um, the probe location cannot be placed with a click, but uh, so we leave make here a click, and um, to insert this uh, probe location, you have to control uh, press. Um, you have to press Control and P. So now you see here the the cross. So now our probe location is, is fixed. Um, you can make this point a bit larger. If you say that the radius is 0 0.01, so here you see the some kind of sphere that's some in some way useful. You can move this also. Um, we will take a look on the, in the in the mid plane. So we will change the Z coordinate to 0 0.015. And we click on Apply. So here you see the results in this point. You see the, the coordinates. You see the velocity. And you see the pressure. We are only interested in the pressure, but 
we cannot change the other values. We mark this um, row and we click on this icon and say plot selection over time and see what happens. Um, now we get uh, here um, a new item. We click on apply and now you see the, the oscillation. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, well, we have to eliminate the coordinates because the coordinates remain constant and we will click the velocity also away. So this is a pressure over time. You see that we have an oscillation. Um, the oscillation is nearly in the range we expected, so the frequency is correct. But uh, in the next thing, I would like to show you that these results are not what we really expected. So the excitation out of the labium and so on is correct, but the pressure in the organ pipe is not what we expect. So we make this away and we make uh, these items away. So we click on delete, delete, and we make the organ pipe um, we zoom to the organ pipe. Okay, now we have it in the whole length and we click on plot over line and we move this into the organ pipe and also move this into the organ pipe. Okay. The coordinates in the Z coordinate, we will change the middle layer 0 0.015. Also for this coordinate 0 0.015. And we click on apply. Okay, we have also the, the pressure and the velocity. We are only interested in the pressure, so um, we go back. And um, here is one further thing. Yes, so let's start. Yes, so um, because we have an oscillation, the, the axis on the left side is always moving. This is not good, so we will fix this. We go to the left axis, left axis, use custom range. So here we say, the minimum will be minus six, and the maximum will also be plus, no, we make it a bit larger, minus eight, eight. Okay, and we start again. So now we see, yes, and this is what I wanted to show. So our expectation is um, that we have um, a different pressure over the length of the organ pipe, and this is not the case. So the Pressure over the um, organ pipe in x direction remains constant, and this comes out of the approach with an incompressible fluid. So now I made a comparison of uh, different inlet speeds. You see on the left side um, a simulation with an inlet speed of 2 meter per second, then an inlet speed of 8 meter per second, then 10 meter per second, and 35 meter per second. You see that the inlet speed has a direct influence on the frequency. So the higher the frequency speed gets, so the higher the frequency gets. So the <coughs> frequency of the organ pipe was calculated in advance. This frequency corresponds to the frequency in the simulation, but the pressure distribution and the speed distribution in the pipe is not corresponding to other simulation. Here is a picture of an another simulation and you see that the pressure distribution over the pipe should be more um, different between from left to right and so on. But what we saw is was nearly 
um, a constant pressure over the length and this is not the right solution. So what we will do next is uh, change from incompressible to compressible. The solution is a change from pimple foam incompressible to row pimple foam compressible. The necessary steps are change pimple foam to row pimple foam in all run, change pimple foam to row pimple foam in control dict. Um, we must apply a new FV solution and new FV schemes files in the system directory. We must apply new constants in the case directory, apply new thermal boundary condition T in the zero directory, and we will change the dimensions in the U and the P file. I will show you that now. Okay, as I said, it is now necessary to change the solver from pimple foam to row pimple foam. Um, for this, we must build up the simulation a second time. The physics model, we will um, leave that like that. Fluid properties, that's also okay. Um, for the field initialization, um, I think it's not possible to have a potential flow. So for the velocity, we specify a velocity of zero. And also for the pressure, we must define a value. And the point is that um, in this case, uh, zero Pascal is not possible. The reason is um, that we are now have a compressible medium and the density rho is a function of the pressure. So if you say that we have a pressure of zero, then of course the density would be nearly infinity. So you must insert um, some kind of pressure. Um, I will insert one E5. Um, you will see afterwards that this is not the correct value because um, yes, normally, the row pimple form uh, does not consider the density and this will be considered via the density. I will show you afterwards. I click on OK. And I said that we increase the, the pressure. So we also have to increase the pressure on the outlet side. We make a double click on it. And for the pressure, we specify also one E5. Um, we click on OK. And now we change the, um, the initialize field and the, and the outlet, so the boundary condition. For that reason, we must um, let the measure run a second time. It's very easy, write mesh case, run the measure. Takes uh, one minute or something like that. And so see you in one minute. Okay, meshing is complete. We can review the mesh, load surface mesh. Okay, mesh looks quite okay. We go to close. And we can now go to the solver. Um, the properties, runtime and so on, um, remain the same. Time step will be controlled automatically, end time 0.2. Transient write control 0 0.01. We make a double click on it. And now we can write the case. Um, now we must edit the files. So the first thing what we will do is change um, all one. We edit this. And here the you see the run command. Um, this was pimple form. We will change this to row pimple form. We save this and close this. Then we go to the system. We go to control dict. In control dict, we find also the application. The application will be changed to row pimple form. We close. Looks good, okay. So now um, 
The question is how to exchange the FV schemes and the FV solution. This is a, in some way a very difficult uh, file and you must know a lot. Of course, you can try to exchange this, but I would not recommend this. So, um, but there's a different possibility because there are tutorials available. So, when you go to the installation of OpenFoam, you find here the Easy OpenFoam CFD. You go deeper, this is a version. You go to MSYS, go to Home, go to OF User, and here you find OpenFoam. And you see this is a long past ago, but now we are here. And here you see the tutorials. Um, you see that there are really a lot of tutorials. You see that OpenFoam has a lot of possibilities to calculate. You can see the direct Navier-Stokes uh, combustions and so on. And what we are interested in is compressible. We, um, the solver we want to use is raw pimple foam. Make a double click on it. We now we have the laminar approach. Um, we take the Helmholtz resonance, go to systems, and here you find the both schemes. So you can just uh, copy them and insert them. We okay. Next thing are the constants. We will remove uh, both properties and insert the properties from um, from from this uh, directory. So we click on make copy, insert it. Okay. Now to the most complicated point. We go to case, go to zero. And here also to, uh, to zero. Now first we um, will change the pressure. We edit this with Notepad and go to here and edit this also with Notepad. Yeah. And here you see that uh, the pressure it's uh, divided by the um, density of the air. This, um, so the correct value would be 1 E5. So we make, uh, we copy it and, and paste it in. So that's OK. Um, so next thing is, uh, you must take a look on the dimensions. The dimensions are not equivalent. So we make here also copy and paste it into. Okay. Now take a look. That looks good. So we can close this file. We save. So, and now to the most complicated thing is to generate a T file. So we go on P, say um, copy and insert this. We will rename this to T. Okay. And now we must edit this. So we open this T file and we open this T file. Okay. So the, the object will be T. Um, the dimensions are must also be changed. We make copy and paste it insert. The temperature, of course, is not uh, 300, but we will take uh, um, 293. Um, so for the inlet, we can just copy this. and insert this for the inlet. The value will be 293. 
And we can insert this also to the um, to the wall and to the default faces. Okay. For the outlet, it's um, we can just uh, copy this also. We say 293. So we can save this file. And I hope that I made everything right. So in this case, you don't have any control or something, um, but I hope that it works. So we can start to let it run. Okay, now the solver is running and you see the advantage of using FreeCAD for this application because uh, you can now review the residuums um, also online and uh, you have uh, generated the, the field and the, the mesh and so on. So it's not as comfortable as a normal simulation, but it's much more comfortable then letting run this in open form direct. This simulation will run about um, 50 minutes, one hour. So see you in that time. The simulation has finished. Um, simulation ran 30 minutes, so it was much faster than expected. It's quite funny because uh, this simulation must solve more variables. Uh, um, additionally, you find temperature and so on, but uh, it was three times faster than the normal pimple foam, for what reason ever. We go to Paraview in order to review the results. Okay, first we take a look on the pressure and uh, what you see is that we have uh, also a temperature, a speed and a density. So we take a look on the, on the pressure and let the results run. We make this a bit larger so we can see better inside. So you see also that we have some turbulence and uh, the pressure distribution is oscillating between the upper side and the lower side of the labium. But what's quite interesting is that when you look on the organ pipe, then you don't have a constant pressure, but you see some kind of moving pressure. So this is, uh, seems more realistic. Okay, simulation has finished. We take a look on the velocity. So this should be nearly equal to the simulation with uh, pimple foam. But we can uh, just take a look and see that um, there's an oscillation and uh, some kind of turbulence. The movement inside the organ pipe is a little bit different and so it's quite a good result. It has finished. And next, what we want to see is the uh, pressure over time. So we go again on the probe location, make a click here, and then press uh, Control P. And you see here the, um, the probe. We insert a radius of 0 0.01 in order to have it a bit larger. If we want, we can move it, but this position seems to be okay. Um, for the Z coordinate, we enter 0 0.015. We press on apply. And here we see the pressure for this um, time step. And we mark this line and we go to plot selection over time take some time. Okay, here you can't see nothing because the pressure is uh, 10,000 uh, Pascal and the other values are nearly zero. So you have to eliminate them. This is the density. 
So you also also have the coordinates, and here you have your oscillation. The oscillation looks quite similar to um, the oscillation we had with um, pimple foam. So, but uh, I think the frequency should be nearer to the calculated frequency of 263 hertz. Um, in Paraview, I didn't find a possibility to make an uh, a Fourier analyse. So, but what you can do is um, you can um, split, and here you have the possibility to review this in a in a spreadsheet, and then you can export this uh, spreadsheet, and then you can make your Fourier analyses, for example, with MATLAB or Excel and so on. For MATLAB uh, Fourier analysis is available. For Excel, you must uh, program something or there's uh, something that's built in. So yes, you can make your Fourier analysis with that. Um, yes, uh, um, Paraview should also have um, that filter. Paraview should also have a fast Fourier um, Analysis. I tried this, but I didn't get no um, no results. I don't know how this is working. Sorry for that. But uh, yeah, result looks quite good. We can close this and and go back to the model, and we will do the same as we did before. We want to see the pressure along the organ pipe, so we go to um, plot over line and moves this into the pipe. Um, we change the coordinates to 0 0.015, also this one, 0 0.015, and we click on Apply. OK, here's the same. Uh, of course, the other values are higher, so we have to eliminate the speed and and so on, and now we can see the pressure. Um, if we let it run, then the um, x-axis will always change, so we don't see what we really want to see. So um, we are going to change the x-axis. No, the y-axis. This is the left axis. Left axis use custom range. So here we will enter 10,050, and here we will, OK. Now I found the right range. Sorry for that. It was a bit difficult to find them. And we can let it run. So what you see is that uh, um, we have a different di pressure distribution over the length. And this is what we expected. You can also see that uh, we have higher pressures than with the um, incompressible simulation. This is also what we expected, and this is a real good result. OK, this looks very good. We can close this. And um, we can also take a look on the density. That's quite interesting. And we can take a look on the, on the temperature. So what you see is that the, the temperature distribution varies a little bit. So it starts from 292 up to 293. So this is a very small range. But you see that the, there is a change in the temperature. This comes out of the, um, out of the pressure and out of so there's a relation between the pressure and the, and the density and the temperature. So you see that uh, this uh, simulation also shows that we have a small increase or a little decrease in the temperature. So this is a very good simulation result, and it works quite good. So let's make a little bit conclusion. With pimple foam, pimple foam is an incompressible fluid. The excitation of the oscillation can be simulated, but not the resonance behavior of the organ pipe. 
row pimple form is not included in FreeCAD CFDOF, but the solver can be edited to row pimple foam and it is working. Results from row pimple foam, this is a compressible simulation, show the resonance behavior of the organ pipe and we had some good results of the simulation. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.